One potential application for grease analysis is the pillow block bearing. And there is a specific grease thief kit for pillow block bearing analysis and sampling. You have a sleeve in that kit that has a number of components, including a plastic spatula, a syringe, as well as the grease thief and something to hold it. When we're sampling from a pillow block bearing, our starting point is often some grease that has already exited from the bearing and spent some time sitting there, potentially collecting dirt and dust from the environment. We're more interested in the grease that lies behind that, but we can use the spatula to kind of move that grease out of the way and prepare ourselves for the grease that comes out when the new grease is added. And so we'll turn this bearing on now. And you might see some additional grease exit from the bearing. And it may be appropriate to add some grease to assist with the purging process. Always add grease slowly and deliberately, and never in excess of the amount specified for the application. Now we'll turn that bearing back off for the purpose of taking this grease sample. We'll remove the plunger from the syringe and use the clean end of the spatula to gather some of this grease that is newly exited from the bearing. I'm going to pack that into the, the open end of the syringe. And if you need to, just kind of run the end of the spatula on the corners of the syringe to push that down inside and capture that grease. Then we restore the plunger to the inside. Retrieve the grease thief from the pouch. I'm going to remove the plastic cap. Withdraw the piston to about the midpoint within the syringe body. Make a tight seal on the end of the syringe nozzle. And then transfer the grease from the syringe to the grease thief. There's a little coming out of the weep holes. Now, if I remove the syringe now, I'll leave a little bit of an air pocket. So I push on the plunger as I'm removing it to completely fill the grease thief. Then I want to put the cap on just enough to get that snug on there. And then I'm going to transfer that to the protective tube. On the outside of the tube, I'm going to place a label or a barcode, depending on which kit you have. On the label, I'm going to fill out all that information about identifying the sample. If it's the barcode, the barcode will be scanned into the navigator system, and I'm then prompted for the additional input information, such as the application, the environment, the type of grease that's used as the baseline, the age of the grease, and so on, so we can provide meaningful analysis for the sample. So we've shown the method for taking grease samples from a unit pillow block bearing. Now we're going to show a split housing pillow block bearing and the method that we would apply here. The first step is to make sure that your, your component is safely shut down and then we would remove the housing uh, to be able to access the grease that's inside. So in the split housing arrangement. We're going to back this off so that we get access to the grease inside. There may be, in some split housing arrangements, 
uh, the possibility for accessing the space through a drain plug uh, or even through the grease supply as we see in these. But often we're going to have to go to this additional step of removing the housing to get a little better access uh, to the grease. Okay, I've removed the top of the housing. And I have my Grease Thief Pillow Block Sleeve. I'm going to remove the spatula and the syringe. Remove the plunger from the syringe. And then with the spatula, at this point, when I'm inside the housing, I probably don't have to move the grease around too much. I can just kind of reach down in there and extract the grease that's inside the housing and close to the bearings. If for some reason there was some contamination or there was some grease that I wanted to move out of the way, I could do that first. But I should have access to the grease of interest for the purpose of taking this sample. You may want to take some from each side of the bearing if you have that accessibility, just to create kind of a composite sample. Gives you a full picture of what's going on inside. And then I'm going to put the plunger back in the syringe, go back to my sleeve, get the grease thief. Remove the cap, move the plunger to about the midpoint in the body, make a seal from the nozzle of the syringe, and push the grease into the grease thief. It'll fill and push the piston back until you see a little come out the weep holes or just before that point. And then as you withdraw the syringe, you want to continue pushing some more grease into the grease thief so we get it completely full. Put the cap on just snug enough to hold it. Then retrieve the protective shipping tube. Your protective shipping tube may look a little different than this. It may actually have colored caps that will dictate what sample, uh, what analysis test slate will be performed on your sample. And then, of course, we want to add the label to the tube to identify our sample, fill in all the information, or if it's a prepaid sample, it may come with a barcode. And we can scan the barcode and then uh, into the Navigator software system and then add all the information that is required like the baseline grease, the time and service, and the application. Once we have fixed that, it's ready to head back to the laboratory and then of course we're going to restore this uh, uh, pillow block bearing to its original condition and ensure that there's enough new grease to be returned to service.